the 24th of September 1923 dawned a normal day in Panjim Goa at the height of the Portuguese colonial rule. On that day, the city witnessed a massive congregation of people representing all walks of life, from the elite to the common man. Five thousand people, unprecedented and the largest recorded till date. This wasn't a normal day, after all. Was this a boiling over of popular sentiment against the corrupt Portuguese regime? The reason was far more modest. A funeral to pay homage to a true son of Goa. The unseen crowd of Sporting Blue of all walks of life, poor, middle men and rich men, and of all categories of uh, people of the society then. A former sprightly, firebrand, and now a frail, pious looking man lay in the coffin. The body was dressed in a bishop's full regalia and belonged to a bishop of the Orthodox Syrian Church based in India. An Orthodox Syrian bishop in Goa? History books tell us there was no Orthodox Syrian Church at that point in Goa. What was this bishop doing in Goa? And why was his funeral held here? This is the story of Bishop Mar Alvarez Julius. A story of a devout priest, a powerful orator, an agriculturist, a social crusader, educator, philanthropist, a rebel, an outcast. It's also the story of a forgotten saint. Father Alvarez was a nationalist. He wanted uh, uh, well-being of the uh, population of, uh, of Goa, of his people, and uh, their, their uh, economic, uh, uh, economy to be improved. Okay. You understand? Yeah. Therefore, he even suggested to the people mm -hmm. that to cultivate mandioca, mm -hmm. because he has expressed that even in one hectare of, uh, uh, of, um, uh, of, of land, mandioca would yield so much much more than what Paddy would give. Mm -hmm. He was a, uh, also a journalist. Mm -hmm. He had his own printing press and he used to publish many newspapers. Just off Panjim and across the scenic Mandavi River, atop a small hillock lies the Orthodox Syrian Church built in 1973. The model remains of Mar Alvarez the Orthodox Syrian followers' first bishop, given the charge of Goa, India and Ceylon, and consecrated by the Orthodox, lies in this church at Ribandar. And for many devotees, common people and citizens, Bishop Mar Alvarez, also known as Padre Alvarez, is more than a bishop. He is a saint. He indeed played many roles to help his people and his faith. Here's the story of Bishop Mar Alvarez. To understand this forgotten saint's past and establish his lineage, we have to travel down to Verna, a prominent village in South Goa. Verna of today is Goa's largest industrial area and host renowned electronics, IT and pharmaceutical companies. More than a century back, the economy of Verna thrived predominantly on agriculture. It was in this verdant village, seeped in religious fervor, that on April 29, 1836, Antonio Francis Xavier Alvarez was born to Jose Baptista Alvarez and Marina Expectação Florencio. 
the alvarez household was referred to as devangar meaning house of god that name bore testimony to the innumerable acts of charity performed by the members of that household born in a christian family Francis Xavier Alvarez was baptized on 6 May 1836 at the Verna Holy Cross Church. It still stands majestically by the main highway connecting North and South Goa. Father Alvarez was uh, his house was uh, next to our house and this was an open space at that time. and this house was established then in 1925 young francis was then sent to a secondary school in lutolim in south goa after his secondary education Francis spent the next 6 years from 1853 to 1859 at the Rashall Seminary in South Goa in preparation for his priesthood. The prestigious and historical Rashall Seminary established in the year 1609 is one of the oldest seminaries in India. It is a proud remnant of Goa's vibrant religious history. Alvarez was eager to receive the priesthood ordination and serve the people of Goa as a Roman Catholic priest. But he came to the realization that despite Goa's significant Christian population, there was no archbishop assigned to Goa from 1848 to 1862. Francis Alvarez understood that this was unlikely to change for a while, and his desire would have to be fulfilled elsewhere which led young francis to sail to bombay in bombay francis alvarez joined the Collegio de Jesuit at Mazagao, Bombay, an important trading and administrative metropolis of British India in that era. Collegio de Jesuit school was started with blessings from Bishop Hartman of Bombay. Francis hoped and believed that Bishop Hartman would ordain him as a priest. After joining the Collegio de Jesuit Francis was ordained a priest in 1862 by Bishop Walter Stein of Bombay. For the next 5 years, Father Francis Antonio Xavier Alvarez faithfully served the church. Father Alvarez returned to Goa in 1867, 9 years since he left his hometown. Till 1871 his work was chiefly confined to the church ministry and the apostleship of charity. At some point during 1871 Father Alvarez felt the need to channel his energy to help the poor, the needy and the downtrodden in Goa. This seems to have been the driving force for him to also start his first charitable association in Panjim. It is known that through the work of Father Alvarez's charitable association there was a considerable reduction in the number of wandering beggars in and around Panjim city. The year 1876 was a turning point in Padre Alvarez's life. Attentive to the impact of reaching out to wider audience, he started contributing articles to an influential weekly magazine called Our Cruise. He went on to become the editor of Our Cruise. His articles were critical of the corrupt Portuguese regime across the board, civil, religious, and the political functioning. Thank you.
Studies Metropolitan was a great educationist in the name of Mary and Jesus as school was started. That was in 1877. He was the first director and he has appointed another uh, six teachers. Of course, all six were priests only. After becoming a bishop, he started an English medium school. Though he taught Scottish, Latin, French, English and all, he was so much considering to the mother tongue. He, in his books and other things, he was telling the parents, students, at least at the early stage, their primary education, they should study Kogani. The year 1876 recorded the deadly cholera, reaching epidemic proportions in Goa. He used to assist all the uh, sick people, especially when they had uh, cholera, uh, smallpox, and pest, which is play. Play. Not only by giving medicines, besides giving medicine, he published a booklet to give directions to, to how to cure the, the disease. Father Alvarez treated the suffering victims sometimes in their own homes and even at his house in Fontana's, the modern-day Latin quarters in Panjim. Apart from that, this was during the life of the patients. On that death, he used to carry the bodies of, or dead bodies, on their shoulders and take them to the to, to the burial, which hardly even any relative was, was, uh, was coming forward to do such jobs. Because we were thinking that it was, uh, a, it was a uh, contagious thing, and which was in fact contagious. And all these children were taken place during the night time only, which we were allowed not during the daytime. This was also a time of deep-rooted conflict within the church on account of the twin missions for Dorado Real, which meant the crown patronage of the church and the propaganda fide, which meant propagation of faith. These two missions support an understanding between the Holy See and the colonial rulers in regards to matters of religion and administration. The Dorado mission and Propaganda Fide mission, both we are for the expansion of the Roman Catholic Church. And the Dorado mission was under the patronage of the Portuguese regime and Propaganda Fide was under the patronage of the Pope of Rome. In 1880, Archbishop Dom Antonio Sebastian Villante takes charge of Goa. In the year 1882, Archbishop Dom Valente came to Goa and uh, he was very arrogant in his nature. So there was lots of problem in Goan jurisdiction. No, was, no one was happy with uh, his uh, attitude. Along with this, Bishop Alvarez was uh, publishing the periodicals. In his periodicals, he used to publish against Bishop uh, Dom Valente and his jurisdiction. Archbishop Villante successfully banned Akruj 
on 27 July 1882. Anticipating such a move, Father Alvarez launched a new magazine, Avardad or The Truth. Predictably, the relationship between the Archbishop Vilante and Father Alvarez started deteriorating. The years from 1882 to 1887 are one of the personal conflict, anguish and unsettling questions for Father Alvarez. This upheaval stems from his disillusionment with the Roman Catholic Church. Even all the published materials were confiscated. People uh, were advised not to read anything, whatever he has written. Even uh, he has advised not to attend the Masses, uh, Holy Mass celebrated by Father Alvaris. At this point, there were many independent Catholic missions operating all over South Asia due to the Padroado propaganda conflict. Things had come to head, and during this period, Father Alvarez was excommunicated from the Roman Catholic Church in the last quarter of the 19th century. He was now officially barred from practicing or preaching the faith. In those days, this was a serious retribution. Father Alvarez's calling lay elsewhere. He was in search of a religion which embraced faith as well as welcomed the local populace in its fold. In a most significant development, Father Alvarez got the opportunity to meet Pulikotl Joseph Mar Dionysius II in Ceylon. He was mesmerized by his personality and faith. Thus, Padre Alvarez is introduced to the Orthodox faith. Ever the perfectionist, Father Francis Alvarez immersed himself in studying the Orthodox faith in depth and officially joined the Orthodox Syrian Church in 1887, a watershed event in his life. Father Alvarez continued his mission to spread the faith across Ceylon. He spent two years nurturing the Church of Our Lady of Good Death and other churches which he had helped establish in Ceylon. On his journey back to India, Father Alvarez reached Mangalore, a busy and important port on the western coast of India. While he was about to come to Brahma, before that itself, Roman Catholic uh, people conspired with the ship captain and made him to get down at Mangalore so that they can harass him instead of Malpe, that it is very near to Brahma, just 10 kilometers away. While in Mangalore, he faced pressures while propagating the faith. Unmindful, he continued with his duties and started the Brahmavar mission. In the year 1889, on Easter day, Father 